mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory Amen. to you, Lord Christ. After telling a parable to the crowd at Jericho, Jesus went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethlehem and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, Why are you untying it? Just say this, The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it, as it had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they sent Jesus on. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, a whole multitude of disciples began to praise God joyfully in a loud voice for all the deeds of power they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were, si if they, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give you thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph, and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along the way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory. Grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our king and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns in glory and with you in glory the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the heights. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen. Let's we'll have you all follow the crucifix. Roger and I will be last in the procession.
lesson tells of the servant who speaks for the Lord and suffers persecution, but still trusts in God's help and vindication. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
You are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. And in your loving kindness, save me. From one of the earliest Christian hymns, we hear how Christ Jesus accepted the condition of a servant, was obedient even to the point of death, and was then given the name above every name. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching them throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at the time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and he was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him in some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod, with his soldiers, treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had become enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests the leaders and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence and have not found this man guilty of your charges against him. Neither is Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flagged and released him, flogged and released him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow, released for Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify! Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have, not, I have found him in no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Syria who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were the women who were beating their breast and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children, for the days are surely coming, coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? 
Please stand as you are able. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals. On his right, one on his right and one on his left, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him and saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who was hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was about noon. The darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I condemn my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last breath. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching him. at the foot of the crucifixion of the church of San Damiano. Most high, glorious God, enlighten the darkness of my heart and give me, Lord, a correct faith, a certain hope, a perfect charity, sense and knowledge, so that I may carry out your holy and true command. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I wonder how to make sense of it all. These last days of Jesus' life are like a roller coaster. Emotions are all over the place. People's reactions are all over the place. Consistency? Well, there just doesn't seem to be any consistency. Palms one day, across the next. Jeering, cheering one day, jeering the next. Triumphal procession into Jerusalem one day, agonizing walk to Calvary the next. Hosanna to the king one day, we have no king but Caesar the next. Public approval one day, public ridicule the next. Allegiance one day, denial and betrayal the next. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, one day. Crucify him, crucify him, the next. This is my body and blood given for you, one day. Broken body, crucified, the next. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done, one day. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. The next. What would I have done had I been there? Would I have been any more consistent? 
any more supportive? Or would I have run away in fear or shouted with the crowds? What would I have done? What if it all what if it all took place today? Would anything be different? Had the crucifixion of Jesus happened today, I have a certain undignified picture in my mind of a post-resurrection interview with the local and national media. I can picture hordes of reporters surrounding Jesus and not wanting to be outdone or outscooped by anyone else inundating him with questions like, Jesus, how do you feel about crucifixion? <laughs> Jesus, did you deserve to die? Jesus, how do you feel about capital punishment? And then perhaps later on in one of those private, exclusive interviews with a person similar to a Diane Sawyer or a Barbara Walters or maybe in a televised special with Oprah Winfrey, I can hear Jesus being asked some very gruesome and intimate questions. Questions like, was it the physical pain and suffering that was harder than anything else? What parts were the worst? Was it the whipping, which actually tore chunks of skin off your bones, torn flesh left hanging, gaping wounds wide open, bleeding, oozing, burning? Was it the crown of thorns that were shoved down so hard on your head that the thorns pierced the skin of your head and drove themselves into the bone of your skull? Maybe it was the long, exhausting walk through Jerusalem to Calvary, carrying that unbearably heavy crossbeam, being tired and weak from the beatings, the whipping, the blood loss. When you fell under the weight of that beam, you must have torn up your knees and maybe even smashed your face into the gravel pavement. Was it the intense pain of the nails being driven through your hands and feet, or the enormous weight of your tired, weak body on those nails as you struggled for every difficult breath until your very life came to an end in agony and suffering? Maybe the emotional pain was worse. Was the emotional pain harder than the physical pain, Jesus? Tell us about the humiliation of being mocked, made fun of, spit upon. Maybe it was the taunting from your enemies or the abandonment of your friends. Or maybe it was the painful look in your mother's eyes as she looked on helplessly, powerlessly, at her son on the cross of torture in agony and pain knowing that he never did anything to deserve that kind of punishment and death. What would Jesus say to the probing, loaded questions of our modern-day reporters? How would he respond to the countless questions from people looking for the best angle or the greatest story? I suspect that Jesus would somehow, some way, make it clear that they had it all wrong. None of what they mentioned was the hardest and most difficult. I think he would say that what really was most difficult and maybe even almost unbearable was the weight. Not the weight of the cross on his shoulders, nor the weight of his almost lifeless body on the nails. A different kind of weight. A weight on his heart. I think in a candid moment, Jesus would share with the interviewer, as I hung on that cross, feeling very isolated and alone, a fear swept through me, a fear of doubt. And I wondered at that moment, would they ever really understand? Would people ever really come to understand that everything I've done, I've done for one reason? Because I love them. Because I love them. And because I love them, I wouldn't have traded places with anyone in the whole wide world. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Please stand. Grant Almighty God that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the people of Casablanca, the people of St. Andrews, and all whose lives are closely linked with ours, and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. comfort and heal Barbara, John, Janie, Elizabeth, Bronwyn, Wynn, Bear, the people of Ukraine, and all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them to the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we may pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also, and also with you. you. Let us share the Lord's peace. <laughs>
Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but into the rest from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ gave his life for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep us in the last of the way. Amen.